Here goes a video on the introduction of trigonometry. Now this is just going to be for right triangle trigonometry. There are all different kinds. Um, for now we're just going to be talking about right triangle trig. So basically you have three trig functions that we're going to be working with, although there are more than just three. We have sine, which is abbreviated S-I-N, and we have cosine, which is C-O-S, and then we have tangent which is T-A-N. Now those are the three letters that are usually used to represent it. You'll see my... We're looking and we see the side opposite of A is 4. And the hypotenuse is 5. So the sine of A is 4 over 5. It's just the ratio of what side length is opposite of angle A and what is the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means the side next to angle A that is not the hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse is still 5. The side that is next to angle A is 3. And then the tangent of A is the opposite side over the adjacent side, so it's 4 thirds. So sine, cosine, and tangent are just ratios of sides. Now for this next example, we're basically the same example. Next thing we're doing, though, is we are going to switch which angle we are standing on. So now we're going to imagine we're standing on angle B. Sine and cosine and tangent are all going to be similar but a little bit different. Sine of B. So now that we're standing on B, 5 is our hypotenuse, again, because the hypotenuse is not going to change, but now 3 becomes the opposite side because it's the only side AC that is not touching B. And that makes 4 the adjacent side. So now I'm only going to look at the purple letters for this part. Sine of B. So B Opposite side length is 3, hypotenuse is 5, so the sine of B is 3 fifths. The cosine of B would be our adjacent length over the hypotenuse, which is 4 fifths. And then the tangent of B is just going to be opposite over adjacent again, so it's going to flip to 3 fourths. So as you can see, um, cosine of B and sine of A are the same. These guys just switch, and tangent is just the reciprocal. Okay? That is how you write down the ratio for sine, cosine, and tangent. Now this next example is asking you to find the sine of A, the cosine of A, and the tangent of B. So what I would like you to do is try this on your own, pause the video, and as soon as you're ready, click play. So the sine of A, if we are standing on A, this is always our hypotenuse, but the opposite side is the one farthest away, and the adjacent side is right next to it, but not the hypotenuse. So the sine of A would be opposite over hypotenuse, which would be 9 over 10, and the cosine of A would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it would be 6 over 10. Now to go from the tangent of B. So for B, we have to switch which means this becomes opposite and this becomes the adjacent and of course that will stay the hypotenuse. So tangent is opposite over adjacent so we're going to have 6 over 9. Now the one thing you might want to make sure that you do is whenever it can be done reduce when you are asked to leave it as a ratio. When we start solving for missing sides it honestly won't matter because we're going to type it in the calculator and the calculator will adjust accordingly. Okay, so those are your ratios. So you might be saying, how am I going to memorize which one is which? Well, that's where we use this fancy thing called so ka toa so ka toa is basically the key to trigonometry um, when it comes to right triangle trig and how you set things up. Um, if you don't see it yet, basically it just means that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so that's basically it. So katoa. If you can remember so katoa and what each letter stands for, you will be good to go when it comes to trigonometry with right triangles. So the next thing you have to be really good at to be successful with trig is to 
be able to identify which trig function is being used. And you're going to set up an equation which is going to be your trig value, which is either sine, cosine, or tangent, the angle measure, whether it's given or a variable, and then your ratio of sides. So if we look at this, remember, the point of view is always based on the angle. So we have this angle, which is x. And it's going to be equal to either 4 over 6 or 6 over 4, depending. Now, from here, you look. 4 is your opposite. And then you look over here, 6 is your hypotenuse. Well, if you remember that SOKATOA The only trig function that uses the letters O and H for opposite and hypotenuse is S. So S stands for sine. So the trig function goes first, then your angle, and then it's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 4 over 6. And that's it. You just have to be able to look at the diagram and pick out what ratio you have and write the equation. I'll step you through one more, then you can do the last one. So for this one... We're going to stand on this angle. Way far away is opposite. This one's our hypotenuse, and this one is our adjacent. We have an adjacent side. We have a hypotenuse. The one that uses A and H is cosine. And our angle measure always goes right after the trig value. And then it's equal to our ratio, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? That's it. So now you get to try setting up the last one. Go ahead and give it a try. And if you said tangent of 20 is equal to 7 over x, you are good to go. Because we're standing on 20, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, the only one that uses O and A is the T, which is tangent, and then the ratio is opposite over adjacent, and you're good to go. All right, for this last part of these notes, we're going to need a calculator. So go get your calculator. And I'll get my calculator up, and we'll show you how to use your calculators for trigonometry. Okay, so now that we have the calculator up on the screen, um, I apologize about the font getting a little bit smaller, but that's the only way we're going to get it to work. So, um, first thing we're going to do is just type in some basic stuff. So, when we have the sine of 42, notice it's just base up, basic sine of 42, that's it. We want to know what its ratio is. Now, the calculator can do that. All you have to do is find the sign button right here and click sign, and then just type 42. Close your parentheses, click enter, and for now, we're just going to round to four decimal places, so we're just going to say that the answer is 0 0.6691. And if you're sitting there crying, saying, oh my god, my calculator did not give me that answer, that basically means you need to go buy a new calculator to one that works. Just kidding. Um, click the mode button. When you are working with trigonometry, in this class, you will always need to be in degree. So all you need to do is click down a couple times, go highlight degree, click enter, and then you'll be good to go. Then just quit back out of it, and then type the sign of 42 again, and I bet you you get the 0 .6691. So don't worry, your calculator's just fine. You just need to be in degrees. I'm telling you right now, if you take a quiz or a test in this geometry chapter with your calculator in radians, you are sure to fail it. Make sure your calculator's in degrees. Radians is something you will use in Algebra 2 Trig and pre-calculus and calculus and stuff like that. Um, cosine raised to the negative 1. This means inverse. This is saying, hey, I know that the ratio is 0.5. What angle gave me that ratio? So to use inverse trig with your calculator, you just need to press the second button first. So this is second cosine. And then we would just type our 0.5 close your parentheses, click enter, and you find out that it's a 60 degree angle that gave us the ratio 0.5. The last one is saying tangent of x is equal to this. So again, this is saying what value for the angle is going to give us this. So to make a tangent go away, let's just go back for a second and say what if we were doing 2x is equal to whatever number, 6, and we wanted x by itself. We would do the opposite. We would divide both sides by 2. 
if we had x plus 2 is equal to 6, what would we do to get x by itself? We would subtract 2 from both sides. What if we had x squared is equal to 9? What we would do to get x by itself is we would square root it. Basically, all of those are inverses, okay? So the inverse of a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, would be the inverse of it. So this would be the tangent inverse times tangent would cancel each other out, and you would have x is equal to the tangent negative 1 of 0.321. Okay, so basically whenever you don't have an angle, that's basically the moral of the story here, is whenever you don't have an angle measure and you want your calculator to tell you what the angle measure is, you press the second button. So then that would be second tan of 0.321, click enter, and you would get a 17.8 degree angle. Okay, that's the value of x that would give you a tangent ratio of 0.321. All right, now, like we just got done talking about, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to start solving for x here. So whenever you're right next to sine, cosine, or tangent, remember, just like we just said, we have to use inverse trig of both sides. So then that's going to give us x is equal to inverse sine of 4 sixths. So x would be, you just press second sine, and then you can type the fraction right in there. You don't need to change it to decimals or anything. And then you would get a 41.8 degree angle. For this next one to solve for x, we just need to multiply both sides by 10 to get x by itself. That's going to leave us with 10 cosine 42 is equal to x. So then you're just going to type that in the calculator. 10 cosine of 42. And that'll give you x is equal to 7.43. Finally, the last one. x is in the denominator. Tangent of 20 is at top. In order to solve for x, all we really need to do is get x on top. So what we're going to do is just switch those two. So x is now equal to 7 divided by the tangent of 20. And then that's exactly what you're going to type in the calculator. 7 divided by the tangent of 20. Click Enter. And x is going to be equal to 19.23. And that's it. So this video is just to introduce you to the trig ratios and to show you how to use your calculator. In the next video, we're going to start using trig to find missing lengths of sides and triangles and missing angles. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.